Hello and welcome. In this lecture, we will look at miscellaneous controller structures that are employed in the industry and have been found useful over the years. <coughs> These include the valve positioning controller, override controllers, split range controllers, and selective controllers. <coughs> so let's get straight to business. Valve positioning controller. It's also called optimizing control because many a times uh, running the process at a nearly fully open valve or a nearly fully closed valve uh, is economically beneficial and thus the optimal or the process operation is optimal if the valve is fully open or fully closed. So you would like to run the process all the time at a nearly fully open or a nearly fully closed position for economic reasons. So valve positioning control is that control structure that keeps a valve nearly fully open or closed to optimize an economic objective function. Uh, what is the economic objective function and why is near fully open or closed valve operation economic or economically optimal? This requires clear process insights and only through these clear process insights does one know that okay this is the best way of running the process this is the economically best way of running the process and once you know the economically best way of running the process the optimizing control strategy uh, falls out of that understanding so process understanding is key common examples uh, floating pressure control in a column maximizing throughput in a cooling capacity limited exothermic reactor minimizing rpm of a utility supply pump we'll look at all of these three examples so example one is uh, distillation column control the pressure of a distillation column is set by the condenser cooling duty Now in difficult separations, that is tall towers, one would like to operate the column at the lowest possible pressure because the lower the pressure, the greater the relative volatility, which can be seen here. Typical systems, as the pressure is increased, the relative volatility decreases. So as P increases, alpha goes down. That means the separation becomes, alpha going down means separation difficulty goes up, uh, which means for the same separation, uh, reboiler duty will go up. So if you increase the pressure for the same separation, you will have to consume more reboiler steam and this can be particularly uh, costly for separations that are difficult you know relative volatilities of the order of 1.1 1.2 1.3 common example is the c3 splitter that separates nc3 and c3 double bond you know propylene and propane okay so this is a low separation a low relative volatility separation it will be a very tall tower you know maybe 200 trays and in these tall towers, it is beneficial to run the tower at as low a pressure as possible because the lower the pressure, the easier, the greater the relative volatility. The greater the relative volatility, the easier the separation. The easier the separation, the lower the reboiler duty. Or in this case, the refrigeration duty. <coughs> so, One would like to operate such tall towers at as low a pressure as possible because then the separation is easier. Reboiler duty or alternatively condenser duty would then be lower for the same degree of separation. Condenser duty becomes crucial in systems where refrigeration is required in order to condense the overhead vapor. Okay. So now since condenser sets the column pressure, we would like to operate the column such that the condenser duty valve is nearly fully open all the time. So that corresponds to running the column at 
full condenser capacity or near full condenser capacity all the time which is corresponding to the column operating at as low a pressure as possible and the separation being as easy as possible and therefore the revolver duty being as low as possible so here is a column we are just showing the overhead section this is what you typically do you manipulate the condenser duty valve to hold the pressure uh, this is the pressure set point this is the pressure set point now <coughs> if this valve is only let us say 50 percent open let's say this valve opening is only 50 percent then what that says is that you are running the column at too high a pressure you can increase the valve position or you can decrease the pressure set point and if you decrease the pressure set point in order to reduce the column pressure the pressure controller will open the cooling valve the condenser cooling valve and 50 percent will then go to maybe 60 percent and if you increase uh, decrease the pressure set point further in order to reduce the pressure the pressure controller will fur further increase the cooling duty and so your valve position will go to 70 percent and you can keep doing this until the valve, posi valve position is say 80 percent open and then you have 20 percent buffer or a 20 percent back off from 100 100 percent a fully open valve this 20 percent is required so that if there are pressure surges you can still control the pressure and so the idea is I take the valve position I take the valve position I take the valve position compare it with say 80 percent which is nearly fully open and if the valve position is less than 80 percent I decrease the pressure set point yeah so this will ensure column operation at nearly fully open condenser duty so this is what I have shown here so this ensures column operation at near open condenser valve 20 percent back off has been given to ensure pressure control during surges so for example let us say suddenly the pressure of the column goes up then you can increase the duty from 80 to 20 100 percent you know the valve positioning the valve condenser valve can go from 80 percent to 100 percent open and then this 20 percent extra duty will hopefully allow you to tide over the pressure surge without losing pressure control yeah uh, note that the valve positioning controller can be a slow controller and it could just be for example a pure integral integral controller it could be a pure eye controller now because the column pressure is floating column pressure floats it's also called floating pressure control because the column pressure floats you will have to use pressure compensated temperature set points compensated temperature set points see in distillation what is done is instead of controlling composition which is difficult to measure you control tray temperature and the idea is if you control a tray temperature at a given pressure if the temperature is increasing what that means is heavy component is accumulating or conversely uh, light component is decreasing yeah so temperature is an indirect reflection of composition so composition is indirectly controlled by holding temperature because temperature is so much easier to measure but then the assumption is that the pressure is constant but now the column pressure is floating and therefore holding temperature constant you don't know whether the temperature temperature constant is because the composition is constant or if the temperature is varying is it varying because the composition is changing of the tray or because the pressure is changing of the column so you can't distinguish whether it's the composition effect or the temperature effect and therefore uh, if you still want to use temperature control then you will have to compensate the temperature set point 
for changes in the column pressure how to do that it's you know just use linear interpolation given a composition what is the bubble temperature at a given pressure given the same composition what is the bubble temperature at a higher pressure and uh, you know one can use linear interpolation for intermediate pressure so what should the temperature set point be will come from this interpolated bubble point yeah so that kind of pressure compensation can easily be done but the point is to realize the energy benefit with the temperature control system uh, one will require pressure compensation compensation of the temperature set points okay maximizing throughput in a cooling capacity limit exothermic reactor so what we have is you know a jacketed reactor cooling water going in cooling water going out and and <coughs> you have the fresh reactant feed and reactor temperature is controlled in a typical cascade arrangement uh and let us just assume that the cooling water is circulating in a in a loop and this is the overflow yeah which is how typically it is done okay then i would like to maximize the rate of feed passing through the reactor because the more feed i process the more product i make the more product i make uh, the more uh, product revenues i make the more product revenues i make the more money i make so i want to maximize throughput so what will like operator do operator will increase this set point will say okay increase the column feed uh, increase the reactor feed if you increase the reactor feed reactor composition increases composition of the reactants increases in the reactor and therefore the reaction rate increases and therefore the product rate increases now as the reaction rate increases let us say it's an exothermic uh, reaction system uh, the amount of heat released due to reaction that also increases and because the amount of heat released due to reaction increases in order to maintain the reactor temperature your coolant valve q coolant will also go up now we are saying that as we increase the throughput this coolant valve maxes out it becomes fully open a coolant valve maxing maxing out means that you don't have any more reaction heat removal capacity so if your reaction heat removal capacity limited then if you keep cranking up the feed even though your coolant cooling valve has become fully open uh, then you have lost reactor temperature control it's an exothermic system and then you can have reaction runaway and reaction runaways bhopal gas tragedy was one example can be disastrous particularly for highly exothermic systems okay so we don't want this uh, reaction runaway and yet we want that the reactor process as much feed as possible because that helps maximize my revenue and hence uh, viability of the of the company or of the plant so as an operator what will i do i will look at this guy if this is only 50% open then i know that i can put in more feed this feed can be increased so that's exactly what we do and i think it's so much easier to simply yeah so you look at this valve position if it's only 50% open you increase the fresh feed flow so what kind of a controller is this reverse or direct is this reverse acting or direct that's a question so what that means is if the valve position is going above 
reduce the feed so this is a reverse acting controller in the previous example uh, if the valve position is increasing above 80 percent increase the pressure set point yeah so this is direct acting the valve position controller here is direct acting okay <coughs> so this valve positioning control scheme ensures tight reactor temperature control because reactor temperature control is always through the cooling circuit note that I could have said oh I want to maximize uh, production so let's say that you know the let's run it as follows we'll keep this fully open and reactor temperature is controlled by adjusting the fresh feed the problem with this is possibility of reaction run away that's because let's say the temperature reactor temperature is going on going down so if the temperature is going down you will increase the feed if the feed is increased concentration of the unreacted reactants go up but then the unreacted reactants are accumulating in the reactor concentration goes up reaction rate starts to go up reaction rate starts to go up temperature starts to go up because you release more reaction heat temperature starts to go up but then temperature will go up in an exponential way because of the Arrhenius dependence of the rate law and therefore the unreacted reactants that have accumulated the fuel that has accumulated inside the reactor can then catch fire so to speak to speak figuratively and then there is this possibility of a reaction runaway so from the safety perspective from the economic perspective this makes perfect sense but from the safety perspective this is a no-no this is a compromise that ensures that your cooling valve is let us say at 80 you know, your process operates at nearly fully open cooling capacity nearly full cooling capacity you keep this 20 percent uh, back off so that temperature changes in the reactor disturbances in the energy balance can be still rejected you have that 20 percent leeway to reject energy balance disturbances so fast temperature control is ensured by this here the problem is sluggish temperature control and because the temperature control is sluggish uh, you may get reaction run away when the temperature starts rising yeah so the, which is why this guy this guy is not advisable so uh, the scheme shown here using valve positioning control is a very nice compromise it ensures that uh, temperature control is tight using the fast dynamics of the cooling circuit while the slow valve positioning controller ensures that you're processing or you're running your reactor at nearly full cooling capacity and again the valve positioning controller may be a slow eye controller now <coughs> minimizing high voltage variable speed pump power sometimes the flow rates are very high in process plants and and uh, and the throughput you know the the flow rates are highly variable so sometimes the flow rate may be you know x but it's also possible that the throughput may go down to x by 2 or maybe even x by 3 and for high flow rates the pump wattage would be high but then since the flow rate can be very low also typically a variable speed pump is used so that when the throughput is low when the flow rate is low you can run the you can run the pump at a lower rpm and because it's running at a lower rpm 
uh, you consume less electricity this is similar to these inverter acs your compressor is run at variable speed and because you run it at variable speed uh, depending on what is your heating duty or cooling duty that is required by the ac uh, it's it consumes less electricity compared to standard air conditioners that switch on and switch off and switch on and switch off okay so something similar goes on here so this adjustment knob indicates the ability to manipulate the pump speed so this pump speed is being set by the operator what you are supposed to do is deliver the demanded flow customer is demanding a certain flow that demanded flow must be met so there is a flow controller that manipulates the valve to deliver the demanded flow now imagine that this valve position is only 20% open for a particular flow demand and this flow 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 demand is uh, has high variability you know it can be very high it can be very low too then if this is only 20% open that means the valve is highly pinched and because it's highly pinched that means the delta p is high and what that means is i am unnecessarily running the pump at a very high rpm to raise the pressure first so the pressure is increased unnecessarily too high and then i have to take a large pressure drop across the valve which is why the valve is only 20% open that means 80% pinched yeah so the fact that the valve is not nearly fully open is indicative of a pump that is running at an unduly high rpm so what do you do and a smart operator will measure this valve position will look at this valve position and if it is not say 80% open he will reduce the rpm so you have a valve position controller that compares the valve position with a nearly fully open set point and if the valve is not nearly fully open is less than nearly fully open then it will reduce the rpm yeah so is this a direct is the vpc a direct or a reverse acting controller so if the valve position is going above 80% increase the rpm this is a direct acting controller yeah so <coughs> as i said unnecessary delta p across valve occurs if the valve is not nearly fully open which implies that the pump rpm is too high so the valve positioning controller adjusts the pump rpm such that the valve is nearly fully open which ensures near minimum power consumption so that is how you reduce your utility bill the money you pay to the electricity company for running that pump yeah uh, uh, an interesting variation of this is you know you have for example a cooling water plant that generates cooling water and then this cooling water is supplied to let us say i don't know n number of clients client number 1 client number 2 client number n so you got a demanded flow f1 oh dear need some more space actually that's why demanded flow f2 demanded flow fn and i have a variable speed pump so you see what the downstream 
cooling demand is that can vary a lot one pump is one plant is starting up another plant is shutting down um, production increase in one plant production decrease in another plant and so on and so forth you know so the total demand f1 plus f2 plus fn is highly variable and what you want to do is that you meet the demand of everybody it cannot be that you are meeting the demand of uh, n minus 1 customers and the nth customer you are unable to meet, meet the demand so the demand of all the customers has to be met and yet you want to minimize your rpm uh, or indirectly rpm which is equivalent to minimizing the uh, utility or power pump power consumption so the solution here is you have these valve positions you take all these valve positions put it through a selector block because you don't know which valve is nearly fully open and it can vary today the demand may be very high from plant 1 so this valve may be nearly fully open tomorrow the demand may be very high from plant n and plant 1 demand may be low in which case plant n may be the nearly fully open valve and so on so forth so you do a high select and once you do a high select then you have the position of the most open valve if this most open valve is only 50% open that means i am unnecessarily uh, running the pump at a very high rpm and so you put this into a vpc and that vpc will reduce the rpm should the most open valve be less than 80% open see this is a very nice variation and this simple control structure will end up giving uh, tremendous energy savings of course this 20% back off again is to ensure the ability to meet any surges in downstream customer demands so customer ask give me more you have this 20% leeway to give them more immediately now we come to override controllers by the way this is an example of valve position control combined with selective control this is vpc plus selective control and i'll give you another example of selective control uh, later oh sorry selective control now let's look at override control in override control two or more controllers compete for manipulating a control valve you know it's like uh, <laughs> swayam so were who gets to garland the bride so there's a control valve which controller gets to manipulate the valve something like that hmm <laughs> oh, i think i got the swayam were wrong it's the lady who puts the garland on the suitors yeah so something like that so there are two or more controllers competing for manipulation of a control valve and sometimes the valve may be manipulated by controller 1 other times it may be manipulated by controller 2 and if there are more than two controllers competing other times it may be manipulated by controller 3 and so on so forth so the point is the control configuration or structure what is controlled and what is manipulated so what is controlled what is manipulated is fixed because there is a single valve but that valve sometimes is controlling a temperature other times it's controlling a level and still other times it's controlling a a pressure drop or a, or a pressure yeah so override control actually helps switch between what is controlled so the control configuration changes it is not fixed and it changes depending on the operating scenario and these structural changes become necessary to ensure proper process re regulation over a wide operating space when you mean wide operating space the same plant must run at low throughputs the same plant must also run at maximum throughput or or very high throughputs and over such a wide operating range uh, 
you will require the same valve to control different things depending on where you are and this is usually driven by safety concerns a very simple example uh, for example let us say you are looking at the level of the liquid in the sump of a column and this level is going down typically the column level will be controlled by adjusting the so if you look at a column sump typically the level in the column is controlled by level of the sum is controlled by adjusting the bottoms rate now let us say the level is decreasing and level controller has fully closed the bottoms valve and still the level continues to decrease now if the level continues to decrease and it reaches very low 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 values say less than 10% then there is no very little liquid to boil and if the level continues to decrease and you keep adding steam uh, what will happen you will run out of liquid and once the liquid is run out you will run the reboiler with high pressure steam and nothing to boil the reboiler will burn off will it, you know you will end up damaging the reboiler big time so what do you want to do you want to cut the steam if the sump level goes to lay too low so this is a safety concern so wanting to cut down the reboiler steam as the column sump level goes too low that's a safety concern and this will require an override the override will override whatever function the steam valve is performing typically a column temperature control and instead of controlling temperature when the sump level goes too low the steam valve will be used for regulating the level so that's one example uh, you also can have you know many a times bosses will say maximize production and as you're maximizing production you keep uh, increasing the for example the feed to the process let's say the throughput manipulator is at the feed to the process you crank up the throughput manipulator set point uh, the process flows increase and as the process flows increase let us say a column st up starts approaching its flooding limit so now the column is approaching its flooding limit that means the column is approaching its maximum capacity the column is maxing out and because the column is now maxing out uh, you will require to change the material balance control structure and i'll give you an example if it's not clear from my english once we go through the example it will become clear uh, the only point i want to make is that when you have these overrides with these multiple controllers competing for the manipulation of a valve if these competing controllers are pi then reset wind up protection is necessary Uh, because the unselected controller its output will otherwise wind up 200% or 0% and then when it is supposed to take over control the unwinding from 100% to wherever the valve position is right now will take time and it will unnecessarily delay the taking over of control by that controller uh, best explained through an example so distillation col column steam valve manipulation so the um, column steam is under flow control the flow controller has a set point uh, that's the set point that's the set point and uh, level bottom level is controlled using the bottom st stream ordinarily i will control a tray temperature by manipulating the steam normally steam valve will be under temperature control typically in columns you also measure the delta p across the column so this is the pressure from the top and this is the pressure from the bottom and subtract the two and you get delta p and this delta pc is uh, a controller that tries to control that 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 tries to ensure delta p control now delta p if the delta p goes too high what that means is that one of the trays inside the column is flooded what does it mean that it's flooded it means it's not allowing the vapor rate is so high 
that it's carrying the liquid with it to the upper tray. This is called entrainment flooding. So if the delta P is too high, that is typically a, a sign of a flooded column and you don't want a column to be flooded because that implies liquid back mixing and your separation efficiency will then go for a toss. Okay. So if you have a delta PC controller and let us say the, f the feed rate to the column is very high and to process that high a feed rate one of the trays gets flooded or approaches flooding then the delta P controller what should it do it should why is the flooding occurring because the vapor rate is too high and it is carrying liquid along with it to the previous tray so you need to reduce the the vapor rate the steam rate so so if the delta P becomes too high approaches a high limit uh, then you don't want the steam to increase any further because that will push the column to get flooded and so you have a delta P controller so as a column approaches its flooding limit the delta P controller must take over steam manipulation so that the column delta P is maintained near its maximum permissible limit Uh, it could also be that, yeah, so if delta P is too high, uh, the delta PC must take over steam flow manipulation so that it, it doesn't allow it to go to increase any further and if necessary cuts it. You could also have an override level controller because despite, ev despite of everything, the you can't afford to let the sump run dry because if the sump run, runs dry there is nothing to boil and the reboiler will burn so the override controller if the level goes too low the override level controller must cut the steam okay so normally you have steam under temperature control but if the column approaches flooding the steam must be manipulated by the delta pc controller delta p controller and if the sump level goes too low the steam must be manipulated by the override level controller so that the steam rate is cut note that both delta p and olc delta p controller and override level controllers are there to cut the steam so that the level doesn't run dry so that the column doesn't flood yeah how do you do it you put in a low selector there so this low selector selects the smallest of the three input signals so just to think this through properly imagine delta p is so 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 let us say delta p has a set point and this delta p set point will be close to a maximum limit that the column is allowed okay so let us say there is a delta p and let us say the current delta p is uh, less than or much much less than delta p max that means i'm far away from column flooding okay so if delta p is much much less than delta p max then what will this controller do to the steam in order to increase the delta p in order to cause this delta p to reach delta p max it will say increase the steam so the output of delta PC controller would be high. Imagine a situation where this level is about 50% close to, you know, it's, it's not too low. In that case, what would the output of this guy be? The output of this guy would be, well, I want the level to go to 20%. Right now it's 50%. So what should it do to the steam? I want the steam to increase so that the level can decrease from 50 to 20 percent yeah so the output of so if you have level much much greater than 20 percent then OLC output is high if if both these outputs are high the temperature controller output which is somewhere between 0 and 100 percent this is the one that will be the lowest this will get selected and the steam manipulation under normal conditions is 
with the temperature controller. Now let us say the operator is increasing this the, the feed rate. If the feed rate is increasing in order to hold the temperature, feed is cold in order to hold the temperature, the temperature controller will cause the steam to increase. As the steam increases, the delta P will go up. Delta P keeps going up, 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 up because the operator is increasing the feed. It keeps going up, 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 up and as it approaches delta P set point max and it and as it approaches and starts going up, you see, as delta P is increasing, this guy will keep decreasing. The output of the delta P controller will keep decreasing and if delta P continues to keep going up and up and up, this signal will keep going down and down and down and ultimately it will become less than this guy. Once it becomes less than less than the temperature controller output, now instead of the temperature controller signal going through the low selector block, it is the delta PC output that will go through the block and the steam manipulation has now shifted from the temperature controller to the delta P controller. You can apply a similar kind of logic. So if the level keeps decreasing from 50%, keeps going down, 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 then this signal will keep going down, 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 down. And if this signal keeps going down, 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 ultimately it will become the lowest signal of the three and eventually steam manipulation will pass to the override level controller. So if the level goes too low, uh, steam manipulation would be with the override level controller. And what will it do? Override level controller will cut down the steam, cut down the steam until the level starts to increase back up. Now if it, the level starts to increase back up, as it increases above 20%, uh, this signal will keep increasing. As it keeps increasing, uh, it will no longer be the lowest signal and then steam valve manipulation will pass either to the temperature controller or to the delta P controller. Typically, it will pass to the temperature controller. So, I hope how it operates is, is clear. Notice that this difference in set points is essential. If you have uh, both the set points 50%, uh, then don't know which one will get selected. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So this is this distillation column steam valve manipulation. Now imagine a situation where the delta P controller has taken over steam valve manipulation. If delta P controller has taken over steam valve manipulation, then temperature control has been lost. If temperature control has been lost, that means this bottom product, there is no quality control, its composition will now swing. So now the question is what can I do in order to maintain the bottom, you know, in order to regain temperature control and this requires reconfiguration of the control system which we'll consider next so here is a process where i'm just showing in, in, in a, a, a simple extract of a process a simple subsection of a process so you've got the feed to the process under flow control and don't look at the low selectors right now normally this set point will be set by the operator and throughput manipulator TPM means throughput manipulator so the throughput is being manipulated by the operator operator is setting how much feed is going in and ordinarily you will have this valve under level control so there's a flow controller on this valve and the flow controller is receiving the set point from a level controller and the hold up in the tank is U1 and typically as you see in a distillation column uh, the sump level is being controlled by adjusting the bottom flow rate and steam flow is being adjusted by a temperature controller this is how normally the system would work now let us say the operator cranks up the feed flow if he cranks up the feed flow this flow will get cranked up if this flow gets cranked up steam will get cranked up and if steam gets cranked up the vapor rate will be too high we will 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 get cranked up and eventually you will reach a situation where the column starts approaching flooding and if the column starts approaching flooding then what you want is column approaching flooding is indicated by a delta p controller so the delta p controller 
output like I discussed previously will start decreasing and now instead of the steam being manipulated by the temperature controller the steam will now get manipulated by the delta P controller because the column is approaching flooding. So you have lost temperature control. So if you have lost temperature control we need a different handle to regain temperature control. How do we regain temperature control? This is what we do. We put in an override temperature controller. So uh, let me let me continue the chain of thought. So you are putting in more what is coming in here is more than the column can handle without getting flooded. So delta P controller will eventually start cutting down the steam. If the steam is being cut down and more is being put in than can be boiled off, what will happen is temperature controller has been lost. If temperature control has been lost, then the temperature, because you are not putting in extra steam, because the delta P controller is now reducing the steam in order to keep the column away from flooding or is not allowing the steam to rise up in order to keep the column away from flooding. So you don't have enough steam to boil off whatever you are putting in and therefore the light stuff which could not be boiled off will start dropping down. If it starts dropping down the temperature will start dropping down. If the temperature starts dropping down temperature of the control tray starts dropping down. So now notice I have an override temperature controller whose set point is somewhat lower than this set point maybe two, one or two degrees. So as the temperature starts dropping down it drops below this set point and if it drops below this set point then uh, this signal will start decreasing. If this signal starts decreasing eventually this is the signal that will become the lowest signal and now instead of uh, the reactor or drum outflow being under level control it will come under override temperature control and thus the temperature control of the tray is regained but now level control has been lost. So because level control has been lost uh, the override temperature controller will start cutting the feed. So you have cut down the feed but then you are putting more because you are putting more the level will go up because the level goes up. You have an override level controller if it goes above the set point here you know if it increases delta above this set point this signal will start decreasing. Eventually this will become less than this guy and once this becomes the lower signal now you are putting in only as much feed as can be boiled off in the column. You see the controller configuration or material balance scheme has gotten reconfigured by the action of these inventory controllers. So the control structure switches between in the direction of flow which is the blue nominal operation to opposite direction of flow which is the red loops. And this flip-flop, this reconfiguration is governed by these overrides and careful positioning of these low selector blocks. So in this way the inventory control system has been reconfigured so that the column operate at its flooding limit, uh, the column tray temperature control is maintained and you are putting in only as much feed as can be boiled off in the column. Yeah. So this was example 2 of overrides. Uh, now let's look at split range control. Very simple example. Typically you have these streams that are put through a knockout pot and whatever is condensing it collects as liquid and the non-condensables uh, accumulate as vapor in the knockout pot. So you are knocking out all the liquid and then you are left with uncondensable gas and this uncondensable gas typically you got hydrocarbons. Uh, the least you can do is use them 
use it as a fuel as a source of fuel in for example furnaces burners and so on and so forth but then if too much gas accumulates the pressure will go up too much of the knockout pot and then what you have is you would have seen this in refineries if you pass through a train you will see these tall chimneys with a flare with a flame burning at top these are called flares so what these flares do is excess fuel gas that cannot be used by the plants and needs to be released to the atmosphere because the pressure in the knockout pot has to be maintained you can't allow the pressure in the knockout pot to increase too much so what it will do is it will the excess gas which cannot be handled by the fuel gas system uh, will be sent to the flare for burning so you want to maintain the pressure of the knockout pot and the pressure is let's say the output of the pressure controller is u this u is split by a split range a split range is essentially a mathematical operation that is performed on the input signal u and what and what we want is what we want is because i want to use as much gas as possible in the fuel gas and not divert anything to the flare and i should send things to the flare only if all the only if this guy is 100% open and still the pressure is increasing that means i need to i need to send the gas to the flare so basically what i want is if u is 0 to 50% for example then my u1 should go from 0 to 100 percent if u is greater than 50 percent u1 should remain at 100 percent but now because i cannot open u1 any further but i want the pressure of the knockout pot to be maintained i will say this guy goes from 0 to 100 percent See, this is what I want, and this is achieved quite simply by this kind of a split range operation. So, on the x-axis is u, on the y-axis is u1 or u2. So, if u is between zero and fifty percent, u2 is zero. That means no gas is being sent to the flare. If u is changing between zero and fifty percent, all of the gas is being sent. to the fuel gas system once the fuel gas valve is fully open and uh, you you're still increasing you're going uh, u is in still increasing above 50% then what you have to do is you have to start diverting the gas to the flare so this is to flare this is to fuel gas yeah so this is a very simple split range control system and you can have all kinds of examples this is just a very simple example and it's all very common sensical selective control example very common in exothermic packed bed reactors so let us say you got a shell and tube heat exchanger catalyst loaded tubes highly exothermic reaction occurs in the catalyst loaded tubes you got uh, pressurized water that is circulated at a very high rate through the shell side and because the rate is very high rate of circulation is very high uh, the temperature rise is small temperature rise is small and you can say it's negligible so if the temperature rise is negligible the tubes essentially see a shell at a constant temperature uh, there's actually not a control valve but a pressure reducing valve here a prv and there's a, there's actually a pump here that pressurizes the the water so pressurized water will not boil and it the pressurized water gathers heat from the hot reactor tubes hot catalyst loaded tubes the heated water is then depressurized and as it depressurized it flashes and so the heat removed from the reactor leaves the system as steam 
yeah so this is the this the this, the system and, and and the typical temperature profile in such uh, cooled packed bed reactors would be something like this and this is the hot spot this hottest spot in the reactor is not stationary it will move up down left right and so what you have is a bunch of sensors across the length a bunch of temperature sensors across the length of the reactor and these temperature sensors sense the temperature what you then do is select the highest of those temperatures so let us say i'm measuring temperature 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so let's say there are 10 thermocouples so that 1 2 3 4 5 the sixth temperature is the highest in the example shown and if the hotspot moves sixth may go to seventh eighth it may go to five or four this highest temperature is then controlled by adjusting the pressure set point of the boiler this is the boiler so here is how it works let's say the hotspot temperature increases if this increases the temperature controller decreases this set point if this set point decreases in order to reduce the pressure the pressure controller opens this steam valve and as the pressure of the boiler reduces temperature of the water decreases because water boils at a lower temperature at a lower pressure and now I have a cooler shell side because I have a cooler shell side the heat removed across the whatever across the tubes is U A delta T uh, delta T reduces or uh, delta T increases because the shell side is now cooler and therefore Q increases so the amount of heat removed then increases and therefore this increasing hot spot temperature goes back and settles yeah so that's the idea behind how this works and it's a selective control in the sense that this high selector block is selecting which temperature to control yeah so there are all these simple things that get done in practice but which are very effective and very useful and we just covered them briefly here in summary valve position control holds a valve position nearly fully open or closed for economic benefit override control we have multiple controllers competing for the manipulation of a given control valve and this competition is there because what to control changes depending on where you're operating and so by override you're able to operate the process over a very wide operating space and not just around a given steady state split range control it splits the controller output to adjust two or more control valves selective controller control uses high or low selector blocks appropriately and I hope it is clear to you that no matter what you're using process understanding is key if you cannot verbalize what you want to do in plain English or in your Dehati Bhasha you cannot design any of these control strategies so the so process understanding and insight is key to proper use of these control strategies and with this I'd like to close today's lecture thank you for your time and attention thank you and goodbye